Thank you so much for tuning in to She's All Over the Place with Kiriaki. That's me. Welcome. This is not financial advice. This is caring and sharing our experiences in the art and the blockchain community with NFTs. Today, I have a profound guest with me, Luther Brown, aka Luther Arts. First, make sure you're subscribing. To all my listeners, thank you so much. We're in the top 1.5% out of almost 4 million podcasts because of you. I grew this IP from the ground up. And because of you, we're growing strong. I'm so excited. Make sure you click the link in the show notes and make sure you are subscribing to the email list and write a comment and let me know what value you got out of today's episode because every single episode now we're giving giveaways. You could win a giveaway. It could be a piece of art, an NFT, someone in the community. It could be anything, a 30 minute Zoom with me. So make sure you're subscribing. Definitely share this episode with at least one person. Thank you. Okay, Luther Brown. Luther is a full-time artist and has been doing art his entire life. He has been blessed with an intense passion for all things art, like me. All kinds, all genres, and all mediums. His passion keeps him constantly creating and full of crazy characters and ideas. He is currently the lead artist and head of, of the artistic engineering for the Metanoise Art Department. I love Metanoise. Shout out Future Shape 360 right here. Yay! Luther is the creator of the upcoming project Boohoo Babies. Yay! And also the co-creator of the Dum Dums with a Z NFT project, along with being a featured artist on many NFT projects and cultural events, such as Nomad Boulevard, Zero Sense, Quantum Gallery, Freshman Fest, Halloween, Future Shape 360, and more. Luther has been commissioned to do many illustrations, concept designs, and graphic art for branding, clothing, and print media. Wow, so amazing. Oh, and by the way, click the link below because we're on video right now, and Luther is inside his studio so you can see where the crux of his heart and soul is when he's making all these art pieces that I just mentioned. Thank you, Luther, for joining me. How are you? I am doing well. How are you? I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. 1,000%. Luther and I met at Future Shape 360, actually, last July in 2022. And I mean, we've just become close ever since. So it's like fam for life, you know? So gratefully, we've had many brushstrokes of inspiration and moments together IRL. But lastly, was just at NFT Art Basel. And uh, actually, we did a collab together. Well, he did this amazing piece for me right here, the black and white one. And then we did this collab together right here. So I wanted to feature it in today's episode. And every time I've seen you, you're always carrying around a pad and you're always carrying around markers. Yes. Yes. I've ruined many of backpacks. So uh, yeah, you, you can imagine. And the pieces that you're showcasing up there, those are kind of the quick, what I can whip out and try to give to art bands, collectors, anyone that likes art at, at all these different events something that, you know, I can whip up really quick and, and give somebody a piece of art. Definitely. Definitely. That is so cool. And now you have, uh, we'll get into it, but merch, but I mean, um, you have the, the baseball caps and you're drawing on caps. Let's kind of rewind here real quick. So I'm an art head like you, everything art is like, ah! So with that being said, when did you know and discover I'm different or I'm an artist? Like, what was your process? Like, when did that happen for you? And then what are some actionable steps that you discovered and took along the way to explore being an artist? You know, it's one of those things that I, I don't want to say you're born with it. I, I think everyone can draw and everybody has artistic ability. It's just how much you kind of refine that and practice because art is definitely one of those uh, kind of skills that you can refine and practice and always, you know, continue to learn, which I, I still continue to do to this day, be it new software, be it just trying to paint something different or using a different medium. But it kind of ever since I, I can't even remember or put a date on it. It's just ever since I was a, a little child that I just always drew, was always doodling, always drawing on everything. So you can kind of see the kind of street style that kind of evolved from it. Uh, so I think, you know, I was just one of those kids that 
really excelled in art and I just fell in love with it. Like just had a passion with it and did it all through my entire, you know, childhood up until adult. You know, I think when you get to that that age when you're in your twenties and everything and you're going to school and you're chasing other aspirations. I kind of let it fall off of the map and uh, I literally didn't pick up and do any art for it must have been probably it, close to 10 years thereabouts, something like that. Like I didn't even like draw or do anything. And then I just started doing it again. And I just like, I don't know. I want to know if you say you fall back in love with it, but you know, I kind of want to say that. I love that. that that's kind of what happened with me. And uh, from there, I just kind of went, gangbusters. And I think it was about, you know, uh, I want to say somewhere around the time of maybe the really late 90s and the early 2000s. And I started really focusing on digital art at that time and started maybe a little bit, maybe in the late 90s, really uh, kind of doing, diving into early versions of Photoshop and just self-teaching myself just kind of as a hobby. And I, you know, I'm glad that I did that because I think when you really self-teach yourself, you know, especially self like a software program, like uh, any of the Adobe products, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, or something like that, they it really sticks in your head. So, I, I mean, I even have accomplished artists that still reach out to me today, people that have been doing this for years that ask me, hey, how do you do this? And just because I've taught myself, you know, all the technical skills associated with that. So, you know, I really, at that point in time, I started doing a lot of online art and that's where I ran into, and, and you know, I'll mention him even later, is Ali Sabat. Mm. And he had a website early on that was a character creation website called Majizu. And I kind of ran into a lot of fellow artists in there and several of them I still stay in touch with and friends with and things like that. But that was really kind of in the web two world. It really predated itself. It was a very cool site. It was like kind of a, a social site where you could post your artwork and people voted on it and they had a winner every week and things like that. And it just kind of, it got me hooked at that time, you know, and it reinvigorated my kind of uh, a desire to do art all the time. And I really, from that point, I hadn't stopped, uh, you know, for so the last 20 years, I really, you know, kind of honed my craft, really focused on digital art and traditional art, painting, doing all different types of illustration. And uh, it's kind of one of those things that I just did as a hobby. But I started finding that as I posted more work on social media, things like that, I started getting more commissions. I got invited to gallery. I got invited to, you know, just different things. And it really wasn't until uh, towards, uh, I think, September of 2021, I came down with COVID and I was really sick. And well, let me, let me back up from that. So earlier that summer. Wait, wait, before you continue, I just want to like pick up some gems that I'm hearing along the way. One, I first want to acknowledge you being an artist, knowing something, knowing it, dismantling it, going on a journey and then 10 years or whatever, and then rediscovering it again. Cause I feel that gives a lot of hope to the listener listening or to the person tuning into the YouTube. I think it gives them a lot of hope because a lot of people will be like, oh, I'm too old or that's for kids or, you know, I missed the boat. And that's just so generic to hear those things. They're just so typical. But like anyone, it doesn't matter what age you are, no matter what you're doing for your profession, if you love it or loathe it, like it doesn't matter, like to create space, to create just any amount of space or any amount of time per day to doodle or just to do something colorful and artistic or something that's artistic in your realm, just start giving it your time, your energy and your focus. And then we can see through the journey of what you just explained, how that really builds and like gives you like a new purpose. And just like you said, came off, like went out trailblazing and didn't leave. Sometimes you need that ammunition off of it. Sometimes you need to have something and then lose it. Like if you love someone, let it go. Or if you love something, let it go. And if it comes back, it's meant to be or whatever. But, and sometimes we don't have the choice, but it happens. But then when it comes back around, when and if it does, to be able to acknowledge that and then maybe your full gusto is because of not having it for 10 years. Who knows? But I just really wanted to touch on that because I thought it was like really beautiful and uh, really important. I know I identify in not the exact same way, but in ways. So I can't imagine what that is for the person listening. Thank you. Yeah, well, I think at that time, and I, I can put a visual representation because I remember, you know, that stage of my life and where I lived and what my house looked like and, you know, all these different elements. And, and I remember just, you know, in the back of my mind, always saying, I, 
I feel like something is missing, you know, like there's a, a hole or something, you know? Yeah. That was really kind of what really I think sparked it. And so I really took that as kind of, I, I mean, that's what I did on all my spare time was focusing on art and developing my art and creating new things. And it wasn't one of these things like I was trying to, cause this really predates, you know, web three. It really predates a lot of, I was making it for myself. Yeah. You know, I, I was just, just creating. And so it felt good to get that creative energy out. Yeah. Our job as artists is to create. It's not about the outcome. It's our duty to create. We are the storytellers. The artists, the poets are the storytellers. When everything's happening in the world, we get to have someone look at a piece of art and see a moment in time. Yeah, I mean, it's, I love it. I love it. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. 1000. Very cool. So go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to backtrack on what I was mentioning up earlier about, you know, that journey into at, at 2021. Yes. Um, you know, it was during the pandemic every, you know, at, I was stuck at home a lot. I was kind of in my studio working in my home office, doing my corporate job. Uh, and, you know, it's not like I had any free time. It was actually more difficult. And, and anybody that knows this that has an at-home job, uh, you end up working a hell of a lot more hours than you do being in the office most times, especially in the job that I had. At that time, uh, you mentioned earlier, I have, a, I have a daughter, she's 11. Ali Sabat had these online classes that he was giving for kids. And my daughter, I, I signed her up and, and got her in that and she just absolutely loved it. And, you know, he's creating all these little characters and everything everything else. Uh, so she just just loved it. And it ended up being one of those things to where I said I, I'd gotten COVID and I got real sick and I called Ali and he was also just getting over it at like the same time. And so I was stuck in bed and didn't have much to do. And I was just drawn and drawn and drawn. And he tuned me into NFTs. And then at that point, and as you well know, the rest is kind of history in that, in that regard that, you know, I was hooked. I just let, you know, it was, it was this new avenue to get your images out, to gain a new audience, to get more exposure for your artwork. Uh, you know, it, to connect in a whole new way. Yeah, yeah, a whole new community, a whole new you know group of artists, and you know, I've through that little journey in the last it's, it's year and a half, it's just been uh, mind blowing in that regard. That uh, you know how many artists that I'm close friends with that I talk to daily, many times a day that we can communicate, that we share art, we collaborate on, on so many projects and, and do different things. It's just like, you know, it's it's a completely different world. From that, I continued to do it, but I still did the day job, you know, and the day job is really demanding. I, I live up in the Northern California area, so I have just a hellacious commute, bumper to bumper traffic, you know, and as you know, the COVID started to let up, uh, traffic, of course, got work as people started you know, flooding back in the office. So my commute even got worse. So it just got too much for me. I found myself just miserable every day at work. And all I wanted to do was just, you know, I always term it in a jokingly term, but all I want to do is play with my crayons. You know, all I want to do is draw. I want to paint. I want to illustrate. I want to create. And so uh, at the beginning of this year, even in kind of a bear market and, you know, the way that things kind of took a downturn in that regard, I decided to jump in head first, just right in the middle of, of all of that. And I said, you know, this is the time I've always known in these times, it's a time to build, it's a time to create. And uh, I haven't regretted one moment of it. And I did it with the sole idea that I didn't have a plan B. So, yeah. and the reason that I kind of put that in my frontal lobe that I don't have a plan B is that I'm not going to focus any energy on anything else. I'm not going to have in the back of my subconscious to remind me is that, oh, hey, Luther, you can always jump off and do this, or you got this that's going to be your safety net or, or things like that. Because I wanted all my energy to be focused on, you know, really developing my art career and doing it full time and to be able to you know, turn this into, you know, my, my lifestyle, my, everything that, 
you know, I, I do for a living. So what I'm hearing clearly is you made a choice and the choice was you. You made the choice to put your wants, needs and desires. You took a risk. You maybe it wasn't even a risk, but you you chose you. And a lot of people, they don't choose themselves. They, they you know, a lot of artists will help out other people. A lot of people help other people. But sometimes we don't put ourselves first and our needs and wants, especially with like having a family and being married, you know, you know, and you have all those things that think about. So yeah, brava, brava on the, the choice. It's, it's so empowering. It's super, super empowering. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And I've learned a long time ago. Yeah. I, I think one of the worst emotions is regret. Oh, yes. I agree. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So there's this thing when um, I was in acting class uh, with William Alderson, he studied under Meisner, the Meisner technique. And, and he said, there was this thing he said in my very first acting class when I moved to Hollywood was ask yourself if you're going to regret it. If it's going to be, you're going to regret it, then do it. Do it. I have been around people. I'm sure you've been around people who you hear about them. I know growing up, I heard things and there was just so much regret. Maybe that's why I'm so ballsy and so out there in the way that I am like a risk taker or bold in such a way, because I was around someone who had this musical career and then didn't like really go for it and then blamed and shamed everyone but themselves and forget blaming yourself, but just projecting that regret. I know that just hit hard for me. Yeah, I feel you. Do you have a story about that? Well, I, I just knew that, you know, all the leaps that I didn't take, you know, that it, it's not that I had this regret that haunted me. I just knew that if I didn't do this and jump into it head first and just completely dive into it 100%, that I'm absolutely not just optimism. I know, you know, this, this you know, whatever bear market it's going to be, it's going to, of course, that's going to go the other way. And... I would completely be filled with regret if I didn't make this leap and, and jump into it and, you know, do all this building, not just, not just building, like, but building my, you know, art career, you know, building the community that, you know, uh, we've been working on building, you know, everything uh, that I would be just filled with regret. And I would be like, just to do a comparison, the Uncle Rico from, Napoleon Dynamite, where he's throwing the football all the time because he's just constantly talking about uh, what would have been. Uh, I, I would have been that way. I, I really would have felt that ping of regret that just haunted me. So I, I just had to do it. It was the first time in my adult life that I took a risk. Um, and yeah, you're right. I have responsibility. I have family, mortgage. I have everything else that you know, every, you know, all the other people have. So, uh, but I really thought it was worth it. You know? And what the other things I'm picking up is you did something for the love of your daughter by hooking her up in the course with Ollie Sabat, our mutual friend. And because of that, it got you closer to your own heart and soul and your own art. And then the other thing I'm hearing, which is important is you had a mentor. You had someone you could talk to about it, someone that you trusted. So, you know, for the person tuning in, it's really important to communicate, to do your own research, to find someone, even though, even they may not be your best friend or Maybe you don't even know them, but they have a podcast or someone you would respect and admire that you can get brushstrokes of inspiration from and listen to people and hear their stories and maybe ask questions. Like with the age of technology, we're able to ask certain questions. And the biggest beast is when we keep it inside and the energy doesn't move and shift around. And then a year could go by or three months could go by and then 10 years go by. But if we're able to just communicate, even if it's on like a text or an email or through a, a writing column or something, just to communicate and get it out and not let it have power over you, the fear and the insecurity, it will shape shift because we are the ripple effect and it starts with us. And when we get it out of ourselves, that fear, and we're able to communicate, things work, the universe and miraculous ways well things will start to flow better so I think it's so beautiful with like the story of your daughter and then hooking her up with the arts program and then Sabit mentioned to you like the NFTs and then you got into the game you know I mean that's that's so important because like you know as human beings and as artists like we feel isolated we may feel alone but we can still isolate and be alone and have things be our certain ways the way we want to do
do them. But it's really important to like share and communicate with one another because then we can learn and grow. Yeah, I totally agree. I think artists are extremely emotional beings. We're our own worst critics in a lot of ways. You know, we, we scrutinize our own you know, creations and, and we can be hard on ourselves. So we can clam up and we don't communicate. You know, I've, I've helped onboard several people into this community and bring them in and, and show them what it's about. You know, some have kind of dipped out when things kind of, you know, turn, but you know, it's, it is, it's really, really important to kind of, the, the first step is to put yourself out there. Yeah. So. Yes put ourselves out there. I, I I mean, I just, I'm just not even kidding. I just wrote a, a tweet today. Like I totally forgot about like NFT sales and like selling the art. I'm so about like creating the art all the time, making the art that I totally forgot. Like I have to like put it out there as well. So I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to be yeah. relentless moving forward because there are people sometimes when I'm on the Twitter, I just, I just reinstall it because of your spaces, your Twitter spaces you've been doing every single day for the boo babies. Cause I was off social media. I deleted like all the apps in November. Uh, the TikTok, the Instagram, the Twitter. I took all the apps off my phone. So if I had to do anything from Twitter, it would just be from my laptop. I just have quantum detoxification, just like really get grounded, settle and just like reacclimate. And you know, everyone has their their things that they do. I'm like looking at the scrolling through the Twitter and people are like, oh, drop your NFTs. I'm buying or NFT collector. And then I see people posting their stuff. And it's like, I don't post any of my stuff. Like I never post any of my stuff. Like I'm like, never like very like once a month. Like, so I'm like, these people are doing it multiple times a day. I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to be relentless moving forward. I'm like, I'm putting myself out there. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to, I'm just going to do it. And so if someone's like buying NFTs under blah, 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 or a collector or something, it's like, if we don't put ourselves out there, then like, you just don't know. So it's like, we, we just get buried and we forget. Like I forget, like you would think like, you know, like you see someone and you think like they have it all together or they have like their whole team or something, but like we're human beings, you know, and it's it just, it happens. So it's a great reminder for any anyone listening, entrepreneurs on the show, a lot of different people in entertainment, like no matter your medium, like the principle of it all is to be able to put yourself out there. And if you don't do it, like no one else is going to do it. And unless you have like magical marketing people and, you know, assistants doing it for you, which is cool. And, and they can, and I have that, I've had that done, but I'm telling you right now, cause I did it all last year, not in the way that I'm saying that I'm going to do it now, but in different ways, but it's not the same, you know what I mean? So there can be things that are like obviously put, but also it has to come from the authentic voice and being of like who we are. It's all like all the marketing people. And I hate that because it's like, ah, I don't want to think about being in the matrix or marketing. You know, I was just on some spaces yesterday with like amazing people in marketing, like, you know, uh, Dan from uh, VaynerMedia and um, some other people. And and they're talking about the vulnerability of the story. And, and it's like with the podcast and you being on and sharing things that you share, like that's vulnerable. That's like being so real and people can identify with that. So doing these kind of things and doing those kind of things are like super important for like people to actually authentically connect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's someone out there that's either in the same place in their life or going through the same thing or just like, should I do it or should I not do it? And, you know, and I, I, I mean, all I can say is put yourself out there. That's I, Otherwise, no one's ever going to see your art. And I, I see so many amazing, inspiring artists and, and that are putting out art that just every single time, you know, if I, I, I'm just amazed by what people can create and produce. So yeah, first step is to just make up your mind and do it. Yeah, definitely. The last thing I want to say about that, go ahead. Did you want to say something? No, I was just going to say, you know, just drop all the fear. It's not, not saying being don't be reckless but um (laughs) you know relentless (laughs) yeah that's that's a better term be relentless don't be reckless and just get yourself out there yeah. And the last thing I was going to say on this was like, I was wanting like last year, my assistants to do, I was projecting on for them to do it. But then I took responsibility. I'm like, I'm just putting it off. If like, if I'm not going to do it, no one's going to do it as well as I'm going to do it. No one's going to do it as, as well as Luther's going to do it. Like you can have other people help and stuff, but I was like wanting to put like everything onto them. But no, no, you have to like want it. You have to like go for it. Like no one's going to make it happen, but you period, like period. Yeah. Yeah. So shifting in, like, uh, okay, t- we're going to go with two ways. Do you want to talk about Boohoo Babies first, or do you want to talk about uh, Meta Noise Art Department and your role there and the vibes? What, which one do you want to start with? Uh, well, we can we can kind of talk about the art department, because I think that kind of is a segue into, you know, the Boohoo Babies and, and yeah. the launch and, and everything else. Yeah. Uh, so you, you are 
kind of intimately aware of all the players in this, you know. Uh, so, you know, uh, Greg and Noam started this group. Uh, they are the founders of the Metanoise group. And of course, as you know, they, they held this large event, uh, Future Shape, during the summer, which was just you know, I think of all the different IRL events I've been to, be it whatever it is, that has to be without question the funnest. It was just pride. Yes. The finest also. Yes. 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 It was curated start to finish. They took care of every, everything. It was, you know, from a, a private party at uh, Meow Wolf with Dead Mouse. And then, you know, just just all that. We had 3,000 people the next night uh, with Don Diablo and Gigamesh and all that. And I, I got the chance to do. And you were live painting. Yes. Live painting it. And I have videos and photos. You were live painting with Manny Links. Yes, yes. And and we were, it, a funny thing about that night was that we were so close to the stage and it was so dark. We had to paint by, via phone light and the bass was so strong <laughs> that I probably still have hearing loss, or, but the bass was so strong it was actually vibrating a canvas off of our, uh, off of our easels. So it was just like such a chaotic night, but at the end, it was still a blast. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Uh, I made this neat piece of art that went over to the the Blackbird Jeans group. Uh, so that was really cool. And, uh, you know, that whole event with it being so small and curated start to finish from lodging, from food, from everything. It was just a blast. So I can't wait for the next one. Yeah. Um, anybody out there listening, they want to try to get into the Metanoise group, go to metanoise.io not to chill too much but you know that is definitely chill yeah no chill away we're here to educate and let people yeah. know like the vibes yeah. and we'll put it in the show notes we'll put the links in the show notes for sure yeah with the- uh, love metanoise uh the art department and so when did you uh connect with uh metanoise so then it was uh, that's when we met but um so obviously like you met them before because you were there so yeah yeah so uh i actually met greg the first time during the nomad project Mm -hmm. so uh greg was an integral part of the nomad project uh in launching that and he was he was part of the the team getting that that product out and that was a really successful you know uh nft project that pulled in a lot of uh outside artists to collaborate uh with isabel lagos uh kind of that uh, uh, character that she has that's all over Venice, uh, the, the ape, and you might see paintings if you're in that area and you wonder who does it, that's that's her. So a real uh, kind of identifiable character. Yeah. Um, and so they, they rolled out that project. It was real successful. It had a really great community. And that's really where I met Greg and Noam and, and the rest of the team. And uh, we went to the uh they had you know the uh and that was in east denver originally uh so 2021 east denver and uh no 2022 i'm sorry this is the beginning of last year is when i met greg I know. And, it's like we, it's yeah. like a whole year skipped. I get it. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it happens. I get it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so yeah, it's all boring. Yeah. But uh, any, anyway, from there, uh, you know, he, he saw my art and, you know, it all started with me handing him a sticker uh, type scenario and he saw one of my characters. And then from there, he's, you know, he, he talks about the story quite frequently. And he's just like, where do I get these? What, who's it? You know, that, that whole thing. And it kind of rolled from there. And we stayed in contact and all the IR events and you know not now it's at the point we talk a hundred times a day and you know that that type thing and uh so earlier this this last year we came up with the idea of really developing the art department and rolling some of our projects that we have through the art department and one thing that we've been very passionate about and really wanting is to create a streetwear brand because i love merch i love streetwear and in fact you know i you see i wear in my stuff right now so we just wanted to get something that and, and every time you go to a lot of these irl events some of the merch which is, mm, it's, it's less than good, you know? So we wanted to really create something that people wanted to wear and some something that people, you know, if you were an NFT collector, that you could put your NFT because uh, with like a lot of PFP projects, you see it all through Twitter and other social media accounts. They these people use those images as their identity. Um, you know, it's it's a lot of times ends up being you know that's the community I belong to. This is 
the community that I've invested my, my, my time and these, these are my friends, this is the image. And in a lot of ways, that really forms that individual's I- identity. And so we wanted to be able to say, okay, hey, if, if you are in our community, you like our project, you bought into our art, uh, you've collected our work, we want to be able to say, if you want to put this on a custom created by you garment, then we want to be able to provide the means of that in a high quality, high quality printing. So uh, we've really worked hard this last year on finding the right manufacturer and the right people to partner with to be able to do high quality garments with really high quality printing and to do custom printing and do this meant to ship. So I know not everybody's going to want to have their PFP. Maybe they just want to have an art department hoodie or an art department hat or anything like that. Our real focus within the art department is to develop that life brand experience uh, with the collectors and give them that opportunity to really be able to create custom clothing, to have this custom one-of-a-kind clothing. So we've been busy building that infrastructure, uh, and uh, we're really, I, I mean, at a screaming pace to make our launch date, or not launch date, our actual reveal date. So we want to have that all ready to go by the time that our first inaugural Genesis project launches. We want to have that ready and available. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I love the team. Shout out to Noam and Greg. That's amazing. It's so exciting. Yeah, and you're spearheading the department, which is awesome. You're like a dad, a leader, you know, this is great. This is so, so good. I love it. And then um, you also mentioned uh, skateboards. So are you doing skateboards for that, uh, a part of that line as well? Some of them? Yeah. Uh, well, with the manufacturer we've, we've talked to, it's kind of sky's the limit. It's just based on, cool. you know, the products that they have in their yeah. lineup and, and the suppliers that they've partnered with. I'm just painting some. We want to have some available to do giveaways during this IRL event. Uh, so I've actually taken some of my street characters and have painted painted on some of them. My whole thing is finding the time right now. As you know, uh, coming up to a launch of a project is pretty time demanding. So, uh yeah, I'm yes. Yeah, I I'm, yeah. I'm doing a lot of promo, a lot of, you know, spaces and working a lot with with the team, you know, cuz it's not just me. When people come outside and look at this from the outside in and really don't understand what really involves a an NFT project, it's you got to have a development team, you have marketing, you have I mean, yeah. go across the board about how many people really get involved. With that being said, you know, people can take some confidence that, you know, there's a lot of livelihood resting on, you know, the, the success of the project. So a lot of people are going to put a lot of good energy into it. They're going to work hard. And so that's a really big element of it. It's not just the, you know, from the out, again, people that are unfamiliar with it, that it's just like, oh, it's just a JPEG or NFTs are a scam or I, I've, I've heard it all. And, and, but once you can actually get somebody and explain to them the utility and all the possibilities and everything that can come out of this, I, I think the light bulb goes off and they really start to say, wow, that, that's cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why we have the podcast. So uh, we're not getting into like so many details. Maybe we can talk about brushstrokes when we talk about Boohoo Babies. But, um, you know, people can go to um, the link below and sign up for my newsletter. And I have a cheat sheet. It gives you uh, Web3 lingo, like basic Web3 lingo language. Also, I have an automation that's set up that will send you uh, NFT alpha and education on these things. So YouTubers, podcasts, uh, communities, things of that nature. I put Future Shape 360 on there so people can um, get the resources and do their own research. Um, may, I don't know. I mean, ask the team. We'll ask the team if we should put the um, the telegram on that Excel as well because, you know, uh, for the person tuning in, all the alpha, all the info and connecting and collaborating, it's in Telegram and it's on Twitter spaces. So uh, we'll talk to the team to see if we should put those in the show notes. But yeah, I think it's really important for, you know, people if they want to check
check out more of Metanoise and Future Shape 360 of what Luther's talking about to get involved with the community. And they have multiple channels within the one public channel. So, you know, one is the Boohoo Babies. So they can be connected with you directly, ask you questions, things of that nature, like be a part of the project and the upcoming merch lines. And I mean, when we say like quality, we're talking like top tier quality for real. I remember when I arrived in Denver, which was my first time in Denver, by the way, it was so amazing being there under those circumstances with my fellow artists. But like I go into... Um, my room at the Four Seasons and wait, was I, yeah, did I go into my room and it was there or like someone delivered it to me and it was like this big bag and like, it was like all these gifts and one, it's over there. Oh, cause I've been wearing it like every day I'm in New York and I've been wearing it like so cozy. Um, But it's this Future Shape 360 hoodie. I should like just go grab it, but I'll wear it in future podcasts to be representing for the team. But it's like Future Shape and has Think NFT with Scott Page on the back. And it's just so cozy on the inside like the quality is so good it feels good the energy and the sentimental value that I associate with that of my like that experience with everyone during Denver it's sensorial so not only like you're you're expressing like not only like the community and like I'm a part of this community it, it also, also represents a feeling and like oh I was at this event in in Venice at this gallery or like I, I was here when I like met this person and that's when my life changed and that's how it is you know that's how it is so definitely um Um, check out the products coming up. I'm really excited to uh, see some new products myself. Yeah. Oh, and it's it's so cool because I have sensitive teeth. I have very sensitive teeth. And so I don't like things that are like metal, like going going on my teeth. So I like I like plastic or and but normally the on the go water jugs and stuff, they're like, it's always like so small to clean them. So I never I never use them Or, or it's like plastic, but then like a metal top. And I just I don't like the sound in my ears because I like wear rings and stuff. Long story short, I have one that was in the gift bag and it's like metanoise on it and it, it's like perfect so you can clean it and like it's, like, it's just the design is really great. So uh, I'm like like upselling over here. But yeah, I'm, like, I'm so excited because it took years for me to find like the perfect like on the go that wasn't like bulky but it was like chic and classy. It's like sophisticated. It's like it's kind of like Chanel but not like it's super like the, the how it feels and the, the vibe that I get from it, if that makes sense. And it fits in your cup holder, so. Well, it does. Well, it does in mine. <laughs> but I'm in New York, so my car yeah. is like at my mom and dad's in Michigan. Uh, I, I took my, I, let, I didn't need my car in the city because, you know. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah, 1,000. Love that. Love that. Okay, before we move on to the Boohoo Babies, I have to give a shout out to Ali Sabit since we were like brought him up a couple times. Um, but this is this is his uh, Tokyo Punks. And this is my NFT cartoon, Katie. And I made like a whole line on it. So shout out to Ali Sabit and Tokyo Punks. But yeah, how you can take your JPEG, like you said, and make real utility about it and take it and like do things. I made a whole merch line, um, like everything you can think about. So with the um, switching into the Boohoo Babies real quick, like are people going to be able to take their PFP as a utility of their NFT and actually uh, do that? Or what's the vibes you're doing with with uh, fashion? Is it going to be in-house with Metanoise Art Department? Or can people go and uh, do it as well? Because it's a PFP project. Because sometimes as an artist, people can do that. And sometimes they can't. So how is it with the Boohoo Babies? Uh, Great question, because that is one of our focus. And we're going to do that completely different than any other project that has done it thus far. Uh, Yeah, we got a lot of different things that we're introducing into this first Genesis rollout. I got a lot of things. But... Uh, we, we're actually forming that right now and doing all the legal, legal things. That's in Greg's Avenue, but we want, yeah, well, that, that's part of it. We want to be able to provide the collectors with some ability to turn their image into profit. So we want to have, again, that relationship and that, that sharing of the IP and licensing. Uh, right now we're, we're discussing the exact numbers of what, it, what it's going to be. But say, for example, you meant some really extreme because each one of them are completely different, unique one for ones. They're just completely different. There's a lot of super rare versions within that of special characters, special traits, clothes. 
clothes, things like that. End product, a lot of them, they're like pop art. They're really, really cool. Again, I'm hoping a lot of people can find their identity within those images. But we also have the upwards of 40 uh, plus contributing artists out there, some of the biggest in, in, in the space, including Ali Sada, that has created their own boo. What we want to do is if the holders and the, and the collectors of those images want to turn those into products, we want to be able to provide that manufacturing portion of it and say, hey, if we have this image, we sell it in the store, we give you a really good percentage of that sale, even though your hands are, you just have the image. So we want to do that. I know that that we want to share that you know, creation with you and we want our, to grow our community and have people, you know, really part of the Boohoo family. If you have whatever you say, hey, I want to put this on a surfboard, Yeah. then we will either try to help you with that or you can go ahead and do that and we will then we'll share also in that. So it's kind of a two-way street. So that's the uh, a, agreement that we kind of want to put into place. We're doing all the legal with that right now and setting up what those numbers are and how it's going to work. Uh, but that is our end goal. So we want to, yeah, we want to create again, it's a focus on merchandise and creating that lifestyle brand, the streetwear brand. And we want to have this going forward for all of our other projects that we have in the pipeline too. That's so cool. And oh, oh, there's so much great, great news there. And one of the parts was like, oh, great. Cause like, you know, like, you know, to have that support, to have the support and the structure and the foundation, like, oh my gosh, seriously, it's so amazing, you know, because it's like, okay, here's my my art in, in, in terms of here's your your art, your boohoo baby. And we don't want this going on like cheap quality, cheap this. It's a whole experience. It's a, it's a 360, 1000% package, right? And so the the team's like, yo, we want, we want, yeah, this to help happen. We want to help you. But we want to make sure it's like creme de la creme of like the best tier quality so that you're not only are, are we getting value, the people wearing it are getting value and you're getting value. It's like 360, like on par value for everyone. It's like a win, win, win for everyone, them, you, and the people they want to sell it to, because it's going to reflect not only on them, but it's going to reflect on the team as well and the whole community. So I, I love that inclusivity on, it's really important, smart. Yeah. What, one thing that we really wanted to do, and, and I was adamant about with our manufacturer was that we they had within their potential uh, clothing suppliers was one of the world's most 360 degree recyclable cotton, for example, that created the lowest carbon footprint on the manufacturing. And we wanted to have that as a, you know, an, an option in the availability that you can buy this, you know, special garment that has the lowest footprint because a lot of the clothing uh, you create all this waste with over manufacturing. You know, we wanted to have special high end products like that. We wanted to make sure that I can't tell you the number of times I've gotten something and I'm just like, uh, you know, you wear it a couple times and wash it and it doesn't. And this company's actually went through some major manufacturing lines and gone through their, their actual wash test with the color test on their prints and things like that. And they passed them multiple times where they really submit them through some really high temperatures, some really, you know, uh, it's the you know quality assessment of the printing that they do on their garments. So uh, you know, like I said, we've really worked hard on vetting all manufacturers and, and suppliers on this, and we kind of nailed down. We're in meetings with them multiple times a week, kind of going through what we're going to offer, how we're going to do it, how we're going to introduce all those elements of you know the customer experience in regards to being able to create their own. Uh, custom article clothing. Uh, and they even have the whole uh, print and sew option on some of their garments. It's quick ship. It's yeah. And that, that's another element. And we were all very kind of, you know, foaming at the mouth about that. We, we were just solidified, all of us to say, you know, we don't want to do this. Hey, you got a hoodie. And then we ship it out six months later. Uh, so many times I've heard that in spaces that, you know, that that happens. So we want to have immediate kind of, you know, you order it, it goes into manufacturing, you get it X amount of days later. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also wanted to be able to provide that mint to ship option. Yeah. So that means that, you know, if you mint something, you want it on there, it's your identity, it's your one of a kind, boom, you can do it. 
Work. So that that's really kind of our, our goal that we wanted to do something a little different uh, that nobody else has done. And, and especially with the kind of licensing and uh, IP agreement with the collectors, that's going to be some new territory that nobody's done yet. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so cool. That's so cool. Uh, yeah. The other thing I was I was thinking of when you were saying it was like, I could see like you take because I'm a sticker queen too. I'm a fashion queen. It's like queen it says queen at all around here. But anyway, Queen, like I could see you taking your stickers and sewing them to be patches and like putting them on t-shirts. That'd be so cool if you had like all your stickers, and, but they were like patches that were sewed on. That could be like real fire. Well, that, that'll be next. How about that? Yeah, let's do that. I would love that. That'd be great. That'd be really cool. Yes. 1,000. The other idea I have, which would, I think it would be really cool is um, yoga mats. I hadn't thought about that. Yoga mats. Yo, yo, the the health and wellness community was like an over, I think like trillion dollar business like a couple years ago, like, or something. It was like massive, it, like huge. It was number one. It's like the most, like, like health and wellness community, like of products. So yeah, I think that could be like really cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, when it's, when I, we talk to a manufacturer about, you know, when it's all based on what they can do immediately or if it's yeah. an, an there's a MOQ and minimum order that you have to go based on what the product is and availability and things like that. Yeah. But they've really developed this uh, cutting edge ability to print on just about anything or to make any type of a print, uh, you know, thermal direct printing, things like this. They're, they're very, very talented. The guy that's the founder of the company is extremely passionate about it. Each lives and breathes this for like the last I I'd only started started in early two thousands on really getting into that type of merchandise line, and so they're very talented. And so, yeah, we have no qualms about that. We picked the right partner, yeah, uh, to do this with. So wonderful. It'll be great. Yeah, I love hearing the carbon footprint and uh, you know the fabric. It's it's so important. Thank you for mm-hmm. sharing all that. So okay. <laughs> What are the Boohoo Babies? Like, what's the mission statement of Boohoo Babies? Why Boohoo Babies? Tell me all about it. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I definitely don't want to get political. Okay. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it, it kind of the origin started that way was that I, I really started them during, you know, the election cycle is really when it when it started Mm -hmm. and all of the summer of uh 21 and we had all of the you know social injustice and everything that that was going on and by any of my statements coming up i definitely do not want to belittle any of that and it's not to take away from anything that happened i think there was a lot of things that occurred during that time that needed to happen to bring things to the surface in limelight but yeah um it was just this constant news cycle with the election and everything else that was just so negative i i got to the point where I couldn't even watch the news. A cer- Same. And, and a certain politician was on TV constantly. My wife had actually said, you should draw this guy as a crying baby. And just like, you know, wah, wah. And that's where it started. And I, and I really, I you know, I, I drew this crying baby. And then it just, you know, and I did it in a real, I don't want to say simplistic, but it kind of is. It's just like a real illustration style. I just started to put different things in and create different characters. And so the next thing you know, I kept doing it for months and months after, you know, kind of using it as a palette cleanser. I was working on projects and doing my one-for-one art and things like that during the day. And then I'd work on this at night and I'd belt some out. And I ended up stopping it when I hit like 500 plus traits. And so... Okay, so real quick before you keep going. Yeah. So your very first one, like your sketch of it, was it by hand or was it on uh, an electronic, like an iPad? Like what was the first... When she's like, you should draw this person crying. How did you do it? Oh, I did it on my iPad and Procreate. You did. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I use Procreate. A lot of people do. That's kind of it. And it's and it's just because, you know, it's a quick workflow, things like that. But I'm, again, I come back to my PC and load everything in Photoshop and refine and do all the tricks and things like that. And I just, you know, I created the first one on, on the iPad and just kept on making folders full of, you know, this or that, you know, different traits or drawing a different character. And it just kind of took a life of its own. It grew legs from there. And I, I actually sat on it for for months and months and didn't do anything with it. We were really on the fence about, you know, so they even release it as a PFP. You know, I did all this art. I, I didn't know what to do. And 
And so I ran it through a piece of software, which is an NFT generator. Uh, there's, it's actually created by one mint and I ran it through there and they let you, before you mint, you can actually just see an example. And I started looking at the finished images. And I was just like, oh my God, these are, <laughs> these are crazy cool. I had never looked at it in that full scope of seeing all the characters side by side. And it's just different combinations of everything put together because when you're drawing them out, you know, you're just like, okay, I'm going to make some crazy hats or some crazy hair, or I'm going to do it this color, that color, or this background. But when I saw them fully assembled side by side, you know, thousands of them, I was like, oh my God, these are just, these are too good. Wow. I, I just, I have to share them. So, uh, and it kind of went from there. And then we decided, you know, through the art department that this would be our, our Genesis launch. Okay. Okay. Love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. So, Couple questions. So you did like 500 in Procreate. So in your Procreate, you just have like 500 different files of Boohoo Babies. That would be Boohoo Babies. Uh, yeah. Well, it's it's probably a lot more than that. As you know, in Procreate, you can create as many layers. I do everything in layers. So what I would do is I would take, you know, the base body image, which was just the outline. Then I would make another layer on top and I would draw all these, you know, separate PNGs as what I would save them as. But it would just be, you know, within Procreate, just a different layer. And I did all these in high resolution. So I did them all in 6,000 by 6,000 at 300 DPI because I like to work, you know, really large. And if I have to shrink it down, you know, and you just get better quality and, you know, better line work and things like that. So I don't even know how many files I have. It's, it's definitely in the hundreds, but each one of those may have, I think at that uh, resolution, there's probably, I, I don't know, I, I think you can get about 14 layers per file in that. So I just have those just chock full uh, sitting on my iPad. Well, not anymore. They're, they're out and over to our dev team and, you know, they're already being generated and things like that. But yeah, that, that's that's kind of how I created the project. Yeah. And so the process is like, because I use Procreate as well. So then do you just select them all? Like you select it and then you put it, you transfer it and you put it to where? So um, like this is honestly probably the first time I've registered one mint, like maybe I've heard it before in passing or whatever like that. So do you take those and put them into the one mint or like, where do you take those from Procreate and when do you put it into one mint and how would one get one mint? Where would they get it? Um, you can actually look it up. It's, it's actually termed as uh, NFT generator. It's uh, they do a full degenerative and mint and everything else. I'm, I'm not using them for this, this project. Oh. Um, I, yeah, I'm not using, I'm using a full dev team. Oh, you said you went to one mint just to see how it looked. Yeah. And but someone could use one mint, but you're not. Yes. Yeah. Someone could. And they do offer up to a free mint for a certain amount. They charge you just for the mint. And I think you can mint like a hundred or 200 for free, something like that. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's NFT generator. If you put that in and the company's called one mint, uh, they have a really nice product, really easy to use. It's kind of almost like, uh, ladder logic software where you put things in folders and you can arrange and dial the rarity, things like that. You know, it's, it's for people that don't know how to code, which, you know, in reality, I don't. Uh, so it's one of those type software. Cool. Very cool. I think that gives a lot of value for people to do their own research and look it up and get their swirls and their, their minds going in the, in the good creative direction. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So I just took the images. They were all, I exported them as PNGs. I did it in my, just my iCloud, pulled them off, pulled them into Photoshop. And then I started just, just arrange the layers and position everything and fine tune everything in, in Photoshop. And then Photoshop has this nice, uh, that you can layers the files. So I could just kind of export them all as PNGs, preserving the transparency and make sure that it stays in the same position and then just dump them into folders and then rename them with all the different traits, which is kind of a cool element of the Boohoo Babies that I didn't like just label them as, you know, like rainbow teeth or red hat or things like that. I gave them all these really unique, funny names. So I think when somebody goes through and they have their end NFT and they look at the trait description, say on OpenSea, for example, they'll see like the rainbow teeth is called taste the rainbow, you know, or uh, there's one with a, a fishbowl around the head with a goldfish swimming by that says, I won this at the fair. And just, I, I mean, I give everything crazy names. 
I didn't want to be the same like everybody else. I wanted to be, you know, really have this stand out and be different. Very cool. Very cool. And I want to give a shout out to the dev team because, <laughs> uh, you know, developers, we really need them. So uh, do you want to yeah. share? Um, I, I mean, I'm just like, I'm like floored over here. I, could pro- I mean, talking art, we could probably just talk for like the next four hours. And your wife's going to be like, yo, I have to get him to dinner. But um, did you want to like mention anything about like uh, the dev team, like that kind of process? Process? Like, how was that for you as an artist or, or anything? No, we have a real solid dev team. Uh, it's Daniel over at Astro Labs. Uh, he's got a good team that works for him. They're really passionate about this. They've launched a lot of successful projects. Uh, so he's right on point. You know, we have a really tight group of people working on this project. Yeah, I couldn't wish for better, to be honest. So yeah, it's yeah. so important to acknowledge like everyone, you know, because they're like you said, it takes like a whole team of people and a lot do not get acknowledged and are some people aren't even aware of those kind of things. Do you want to, um, do you want to give a shout out to any of our uh, mutual friends uh, um, who are participating in the collection, which is really cool? Oh yeah. 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 So I, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a pretty substantial list of artists. I'll just, you know, you would think I would, and I even said this earlier in a space we have, we have one o'clock spaces every day at the lunchtime of the art department. And I roll through these names all the time and I know mo- almost every one of these people personally or met them in real life you think I'd have all the names remembered but I don't <laughs> And and I'm, yeah. I talk about this every day for you know months now. But of, of course, I mentioned Ali Sabat. We have also Gabe Weiss, which he had the real successful launch of the of the Stoics. He created a uh, a boohoo Stoic. Uh, Wes Henry, one of my favorite people too. Uh, uh, hey. Yeah, I, lo- I love Wes. So we have uh, Seeking Sonia, uh, Senator Greaves, which is my cohorts and partner in crime with the with the art department. Him and I work together constantly, so uh, we're always collabing or. or building three minx i, I want to go back to the nomad days that she was always called in the space she created this really cool one stanley felderman he's also i know you know stanley right yeah so you know he's an accomplished artist he's been doing architectural design and like set design and things like that like he designed sets for mtv and nickelodeon and things like that so he's been in the game for a long time really great artist and human being uh brian coleman another element he oh cool is yeah, he's part of the art department also. He's doing the facial scanning and yeah. doing that type of art. So he's a really good 3D artist and renderer. Yeah, I saw when you guys all did that in Denver before Art Basel, and then I saw him doing it IRL at Art Basel. That was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we have Kelly Anderson. We have Mad Rabbits Riot Club. They put one, a really cool piece in. Horror Bears, Noah Warren, which is school still out. Uh, Matt Lou, Manu, Adam Velux. He put a really cool animation in there of a of a. Movie. Baby. Oh, all his works, just like all his creations are amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. He's so good. Yeah, and our mutual friend Manny, Manny Links. Manny Links. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. He he's got a really cool piece in there. He straighted it all up. I actually saw like a sneak peek on your Twitter, actually. So I was like, yo, that's so cool. And then I saw, um, yeah. Anyone else that we think of? I, I think Wes Henry, Wes Henry. Well, you know, we have like Webstock Brian. He's, they got a piece in there. We have. Oh, really? Very cool. Yes. Sphere Punks made one. Uh, we have a Zevi G. Four five six club namaste kind of squatting boohoo baby crying and a uh, really cool like one of a kind background really cool rendered piece of art uh shoke has one in there uh z Hovac created a boohoo oh cool yeah, yeah yeah i had her art curated in july at the thing oh nice nice yeah so it's so cool yeah, yeah. She's, she's she's in her spaces next week um so she's going to be one of our one of our featured artists cool very cool that's her skateboard right there yeah, uh, yeah. she did a, a collaboration with dbs with nifty castle and then um actually sabet he uh drew on it so you probably can't see it but he he drew on it on the skateboard yeah gifted he gifted me that skateboard which is really cool yeah, and uh, I'll just I'll just skim over some more some more names. Um, yeah, re- yeah, I know you know Remo. Remo's Remo created a couple babies. Uh, 
Kate Samuels, she's she's got one in there. Punk Actual uh, Gazelle, uh, she's made a really cool one. Uh, brain Pasta kind of made that Brain Toad style. Oh, cool! Uh, wig, wig, wiggly arms and everything. It's just it's cool. Nice. Um, and we even have the astronaut Ron Garan made one. Oh, really? Uh, as you can imagine, it's a baby in a in a in a astronaut suit. So yeah, we have a really big collection of artists that, and these are all going to be one for ones tucked away in there. Anyone that makes one can have a chance to get one of these pieces. We're not holding any back. There's really only one image that we're holding back, and that's the one that I use for my PFP. Okay. And that's, that's the only one. So uh, but you can still get a, something close. I mean, I'm still leaving the traits in there, just that specific combination. So Very cool. Very, very cool. And then, so I'll have your uh, social media l- links below, but I'll have you uh, share them verbally as well. So the mint date is February. February 1st, which is today, it's the pre-mint, you let me know. So uh, let the people know how they can mint, how they can look it up, all that jazz. Uh, very, very, very good question. Uh, so you can always go to the metanoise.io website and we're going to have the link to mint from there. It'll then lead you over to the website. So metanoise.io will have uh, a link up there to mint. Uh, February 1st is the pre-mint day. February 2nd is going to be the public mint day on both days or ongoing we're going to have this new uh, option to do what's called super cool and super cool lets you purchase your nft so say for example you don't have a traditional wallet uh the whole setup of the wallet everything like that ex- escapes you you can still go on to the site enter in your credit card and information like that you want to know more uh information on what's the website it's a uh, it's super cool.xyz and that's the website you want to find out about it but it's kind of like a stripe experience you can then use that as your wallet instead of signing up for MetaMask or many of the other wallets that kind of, you know, that's still not the easiest thing for people to get if, they, if they're if they not into Web3. So we're offering that as an option too. So we want to try to onboard more people to get familiar with the whole NFT and whole Web3 experience. So yeah. Um, and then uh, we are having a baby reveal party also. And that's going to take place February 11th in West Hollywood. So that's going to be an IRL event that we will have, we'll reveal all the babies that night, you know, Hopefully, we'll have everything done with the store and the ability for people at that point uh, to go ahead and do the mint to ship of any of the products. We're going to have plenty of giveaways, things going on, events like that, uh, lighting up the live music. I'm trying to, uh, as you may know, <laughs> trying to cash in some friend checks and, and trying to make that happen right now. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a really fun time. Really close to the Hotel Ziggy. So, uh it's, that's my favorite place to stay. So I'm sure we'll... That's so cool. February 11th. My uh, brother's uh, new offices is right down the street from there on Sunset Boulevard. Super cool. So I would love, you know, to have you stop by and give you a private tour and things of that nature. Depends how long you're, you know, in LA and stuff, but we could probably make that happen. That's super neat. When uh, Luther was just mentioning the websites, it's really important for you to know to uh, not Google it, to actually go to the actual site to make sure you go to the, maybe the links below in the show notes and click from there directly for his Twitter. Uh, I'll put the better noise link in there as well. Because in the age of technology with all the bots and the scams and everything, you could click a bad link and then things could happen. So just to protect yourself, you want to make sure you're always going to the authentic uh, website. You know, there's a wallet guard. It's a free Chrome extension. There's fish for and it tells you like green or red if it's like the actual site or if it could be fishy or something like that you want to make sure you're actually going to the right site the company uh luther mentioned it's just you know a great way for you to know that you just don't have a wallet it's a way for people who maybe have a debit card or a credit card to be able to participate but they don't sponsor the show they're not sponsoring the show so we're not like you know like putting one over on you or anything this is just educational for you to know so i just wanted to make sure that was really clear okay cool yeah, so, yeah. With, with the super cool, it's just a new product that we've we found. We've done our research that we thought that would work in on our mint. And again, we wanted to, you know, not just be this standard run of the mill 
project and yeah yeah i was in a spaces uh when i when like it was like and then like someone like popped in from there and i heard some information on it very cool very cool so where can everyone uh, find you and aim to connect more everything that i'm associated with is at luther arts l-u-t-h-e-r-a-r-t-s so instagram twitter uh that's really the two platforms that that i'm on or they can go to lutherarts.com i'll have links over there that directly steer you to my twitter or or instagram and you can kind of see some of my art at lutherarts.com see what i'm up to things like that yeah yeah that's how they can find me yeah amazing and, and anyone anyone's always welcome to reach out out to me you know especially if they have questions about the art they want to know how to do something like that i'm extremely approachable i think uh katie can attest to that right <laughs> yeah, one thousand percent. I'm I'm gonna be so advantageous and even um, move forward to say that you know make sure you're subscribing and make sure you go to the link below that you're on the mailing list and where it says contact. You can put subject a Luther Arts and uh, share some inspiration from today and uh, some value that you received and share this episode with one person. And then I'll strum up some kind of giveaway in the near future and I'll reach out to Luther after I have some recipients and I'll decide who who is going to win some giveaways and maybe Luther will be awesome enough to like you know gift you some surprises who knows what it could be yeah. we talked about a, a lot of stuff today so we have a lot of value to offer you and so I'll approach that when the moment comes but that could be really cool Luther if you're part of our giveaways in the near future on She's All Over the Place uh, for sure I'd be, I'd be humble yay yay all the best with Boohoo Babies and uh, you know the collection and how many pieces are in the collection? Uh, 6,001. Uh, again, they're all one of a kind. Everyone's unique. We have a lot of specials tucked away in there, but 6,001. And I guarantee you, you're not going to find one like the other. So great. They're really cool. Very great. Congratulations. Thank you for sharing some depths in your journey with us. And you are welcomed on She's All Over the Place anytime, all the time, anytime you want to come on. I'm, I'm really excited. Um, we started a new segment called Culture Kids. So uh, you're definitely a culture kid and you're one of the um, first culture kids featured on uh, She's All Over the Place podcast. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Oh, same here. Same here. Much love. I appreciate it. Yeah. Next time in the near future, we'll probably be having like your daughter on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I take a second to do a proud dad moment? Please. Yeah. Now, she has so been bitten by the art bug just because I put paintbrushes in her hand ever since she was a little thing. And uh, this last summer, she won uh, Best in Show at San Joaquin County Fair uh, for her artwork. And then third in the state of California State Fair competing against adults and she's 11. So yeah, I know. I'm, I'm a pretty proud daddy. That's so amazing. I know. Yeah, yeah. What's her name? Uh, Zoe. Yeah, I can't wait for her to meet my niece, Lana. Oh my gosh. They're just... I, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, they're just a couple of years uh, uh, around from each other. So soon we'll all be playing together. Well, yeah. congratulations to Zoe. That's that's awesome. And congratulations on being such a thoughtful dad. That's so sweet. Seriously. Thank you. Okay, so that is all of our segment for Culture Kids on She's All Over the Place. Thank you so much for joining us. Because of you, we are top 1.5% podcast out of almost 4 million podcasts. We're going to the moon together. We're like pretty close right? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And please share this with one person. It means a lot to us. Okay. See you next time. Ciao. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Kiriaki over and out. <laughs>